Hello, everyone. This is Carl Taylor again with Midwest Athletics. We are interviewing uh, 21 uh, athlete Elliot Torno mm -hmm. from um, Hoover High School out in North Canton, Ohio. Good afternoon. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Not too bad. For those who don't know, Elliot uh, carries a 4.2 GPA. And he's also on the National Honor Society in his high school. So how is school going for you so far? You know, I know a lot of uh, states have put schools on e-learning. How is that going so far for you? It was going good and it was hard to get used to because of all this stuff going on, but we finally were able to get used to things, settle down, and we actually had just finished with everything. Oh, really? So, okay. Yeah. So now you're done for the school year, you're all finished, your final grades are gonna be coming in. how do you think you did so far for the year? I think I did pretty good. Awesome. I, I can't wait to see the results. <laughs> awesome. Well, with a 4.2 GPA, I'm sure you did exceptionally well. I know you, you've uh, taken the ACT. You got a 24 on that, and, uh, which is a pretty good score. Uh, you're going to try to do it again you know, later when ACT goes on. So now that school is completely done for the summer, um, what is your plans uh, for working out? Have you been able to work out with your teammates at all or do anything? Um, actually, yeah, I've been trying to lead a lot lately amongst my team, just trying to work out every single day, do stay active because a lot of these places are still closed down around here. So what we've been doing is we've actually, I was lucky enough to buy a weight set before all the stuff closed down and we've been working out daily since then. Awesome. You've been one of the leaders getting the kids together and going to work out as much as possible with the social distancing. That's pretty impressive uh, to, you know, to kind of get everybody together because it's been very difficult. Typically in a spring ball, you're lifting weights, you know, running track in the spring, stuff like that. I know you're uh, uh, so participating in track this spring, but unfortunately that didn't happen. So North Canton, um, the city of North Canton and Hoover High School, you know, tell a little bit about your school. What's special about being at the school? Who are some of your notable, notable teams that you guys play? Um, definitely the things that are special about the school would have to be, I mean, I haven't been there long, but just being able to move there, even in a just different environment, just getting used to everyone, no one criticizing me or anything. It's just such a great community and it's just a such, such a good place to be. But then some of the notable schools that we do end up facing would definitely be McKinley. They're definitely well known. And then our biggest rivals are Jackson. So oh, we got wow. those. Yeah, a friend of mine actually went to school, I believe, at McKinley High School, and is actually in the Hall of Fame. And uh, so I know that's one of a, a big school and competitive school to play against every single year. Um, yeah. And rivalries are rivalries, you know. It's, you know, sometimes you'll have a, a, a game that you win and next year you lose. You know, I know how those goes growing up, you know, even in college as well. Um, yeah. Hope to be on the right side of those, you know, when you play against those schools. And play against them. What's been your favorite game so far, you know, being at this new school? Ooh, definitely it would have to be my either of my sophomore year games where we played my old school, Louisville, and it was a good game, but then we just destroyed them at the end. Just oh, felt wow. so good on me personally. Yeah. Or sophomore year, very last game, week 10, we had to win it to. Uh, be the federal league champs, and we faced our rival school Jackson and beat them at their home field. That was oh, wow! The best games. Wow. So yeah, especially with all all it on the line to win the uh, conference title, you yeah. know, those go uh, very much notice, you know, and carry on. Especially for those seniors that were on that team, they have something to look back for. That you know, what we didn't run a conference title, one at the uh, uh, against the rivalry and on their home field. So. You know, and, and hopefully, you know, this fall, you'll be able to see some of those same, you know, accolades or wins that you, you know, that you want, you know, some uh, camaraderie with your teammates again, like you have been, it seems like, that you can take away uh, because, you know, high school football, you only play it once. Uh, yeah. Those are the times when you, you look back at, at your, you know, the best times of your life. You know, um, so going off of that, you're, you know, playing for your high school, playing for Hoover, how has, you know, uh, your skill set, uh, coming in, transferring from another school to a school and playing as a sophomore and all the way up. Now you can be a senior in the fall. 
how to plan for that school and your skill set, how does it help you? What's, uh, what's the benefits of playing in that offensive scheme and defensive scheme? Because my understanding, you do play wide receiver, then you also play outside linebacker, and they've also played free safety and rover. So you're that tweener that can go multiple ways on offense as well as on defense. Yeah, well, definitely I have still the most years on defense out of all the people that we have right now. So the defensive scheme is I'm very used to. We just try to do like a 3-4, just keep it like that. And having that, it gives me the opportunity to fill holes, make plays, and just do stuff like that. And then offensive-wise, we definitely stick to the spread. Uh, with having a decent quarterback, it definitely helps. And whenever – we have a chance. We just try and get it to our guys and let our guys make plays. Awesome. Awesome. So, in essence, from the schemes uh, that you see, you've been able to develop and get into the scheme very easily, very adaptable to it. Um, you know, you say you play mostly defense and process. Have you? How many positions have you played on the defensive side? I had started at free safety, and then I went to rover. And then after I went to rover, they moved me to bandit. But then they were kept switching me back between Bandit and Well. Okay, so that's showing your versatility of being able to go from far back to coming closer to the line of scrimmage. Yeah. So, which, you know, you can see that in your film as well. Um, you know, showing that, you know, you're a leader this year, uh, one of the leaders on the team, um, you know, and going into a – coming out of pandemic that's, you know, people are going to be looking for you to be one of the uh, – one of those people that's going to push them to the edge and push them through there. A lot of people watched the, the last dance with Michael Jordan. And Michael yeah. Jordan just led by example, and he pushed his teammates. Um, if you had a mantra or something that, you know, you use to motivate yourself, what would that be um, for us to know about you and how to push your other teammates? Um, one of the ones I do go by is I actually had to write it down. Um, if the plan doesn't work, change the plan, but don't change the goal. So in my eyes, if you try and do something or face a challenge at that and say it doesn't work like that, don't just give up. Just find another way and keep doing it until you finally succeed. Awesome. Awesome. What is a little known fact about your family? I, you know, I do believe, you know, talking to you previously, I thought you had some people in your family that have done some things in the, in the past uh, from athletically or business-wise. Tell me a little bit, of, you know, what's, um, a little known fact about your family. So my brother actually was able to give, be given the chance to go run cross country at a D2 level, which wow. he did. But then nice. also my dad had uh, played D2 baseball and he did have a chance to go further on, but he just didn't, he just didn't want to. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, we all do. As one of yeah. the things that uh, we all recognize is kids like yourself for 4.2 GPAs, uh, we're not looking to go professionally. Uh, we, you know, we look to play our sport either in a, at a high school level or at a college level and enjoy ourselves and get a degree and go on to, you know, what everybody else is going to do, get a job after school. It's just a matter of, you know, trying to find the right school that fits, has the right major that you're looking for. And um, so, but it sounds like you do come from an athletic family, from a baseball player and your dad to, you know, cross country with your, with your brother. So, yeah. athlete so far in the family. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, my mom's also was always a runner growing up, too, which I was. Okay. Like, All right. I had a lot of my stuff from. So. All right. Who's, uh, you know, in your lifespan so far, who's been the biggest influence in your life so far to get you where you got? Um, this was always a hard question for me, but I'd probably have to say my dad, just mm -hmm. because ever since I grew up as a kid, he was always my coach in every sport I played. He always tried to like help me, encourage me to do better. And then whenever I needed some, he was just always there. And he always just pushed me to be better than I was that day. Awesome, awesome. You know, your parents are sometimes are the best influence in your life because they've been there and done that. Sometimes our kids don't want to listen to us, but at times when you do, you know, you, you understand exactly where they've been and where they've done so that it better yourself. And so, um, you know, in my family history, it was my parents as well, and my grandfather who pushed me. So it's good that you have a, you know, a solid foundation with your dad, you know, to help support you in everywhere you do and guide you through this recruiting process. Um, with that being said, you know, 
what college coaches know about you. We know you got a, a GPA of 4.2, National Honor Society. You're a multi-sport athlete. You know, you play on both sides of the football. What should other things college coaches know about you? Um, we're going to see you at the Honor Road Showcase at Hillsdale College, is my understanding. Um, so what should they know as they start to look at you down the road and come to you at the camps this summer? Um, definitely the thing that coaches notice about me most, at least is what I'm told from a point of view, is probably my worth ethic, work ethic and mm -hmm. um, just my ability to just be a natural born leader because I've always grown up, always had to take charge of some things. And ever since then, it's just been who I am. And if whatever I do, I always put my mind to it and I don't stop till I get it done. So that's two things coaches have known to see me do quite often. That's awesome to hear. And I, and I think that comes off as, you know, we can trust you. Coaches can trust you. Trust you that you're going to be on time. Trust you're going to do the homework in college and trust that you're going to be a leader in, in, uh, in your position group or as other overall team. And that, that's what it boils down to it. You know, from when I saw your film to your GPA and it spoke to you previous, you know, previously, I, I can feel that you're that type of kid that coaches can trust and uh, at any level, you know, no matter where you end up landing. Well, I appreciate you taking the time, Elliot, and I, I wish you good luck in your recruiting process this summer and in your season. Um, you know, like we said, we're going to uh, see you at the Honor Road Showcase and, uh, you know, good luck and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Coach. Sounds great. Thanks. Bye-bye.